we're talking today to Rohin, who's the CEO and founder of Lightspeed Photonics. Hello, Rohin. Hey. So, Rohin, tell me a little bit about Lightspeed Photonics. It was founded in 2021 by you and a co-founder, but uh, there's quite an interesting story, uh, uh, backstory to it, and it's part of your fundamental interest in uh, fundamental physics, optical computing, uh, and the cosmos and, uh, and <laughs> cosmology. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, I have kind of a mixed background. I'm a physicist engineer with a bachelor's in electronics and master's and PhD in physics, cosmology specifically. I worked on high performance computing algorithms and I realized one of the biggest problems was the bottleneck of interconnects between the processes, sharing data between them. And I've always known that there is computer architecture improvements that could be made much more efficient with optics. And my, my fascination with computer architecture, optical computing, and fundamental physics, it all came together when I got introduced to heterogeneous integration roadmap by my co-founder. And that is what is the starting point of Lightspeed Photonics, where we are doing heterogeneous integration. Right, now what you're doing is um, the, not exactly silicon photonics, you're doing Vixel-based, but um, just explain a little bit about uh, your technology. Yeah, certainly, so Vixels have always been one of the most reliable and affordable solutions for data center optical interconnects. The pluggable optical transceivers for, uh, with Vixels has ruled the roost for quite some time. And silicon photonics, got a lot of traction when the idea of putting it with known object and scalable wafer based uh, manufacturing capability appealed to a lot of people but at the end of the day it ends up becoming heterogeneous integration still so what we are looking at is a system where there is a laser which is not based on silicon a detector which is also not based on silicon <clears throat> and a lot of bunch of other materials especially when you start integrating the fiber and you need to start doing the modulation in a certain way to get the data out silicon photonics is in a way heterogeneous integration too so we ask the question, why not start with heterogeneous integration from start and design a simpler alternative system that is Vixel based where you are doing direct modulation of data compared to modulating indirectly through an external laser. And, and can you show us, I mean you've got the, the two different sort of ways of doing it in your hand, can you just uh, maybe just show us a little uh, exactly what you mean? Yeah, absolutely, so traditionally the pluggable optics you have today uh, as a solution even with Vixels, you have a board when typically connected on a motherboard of the package on high speed tra traces the data comes to the uh, optical transceiver here pluggable and then there's another plug which is an optical plug and we questioned this doesn't have to be the same when you are transitioning to near packaged optics or co-packaged optics where you can reduce a lot of overhead of additional DSP algorithms just to recover the signal or pre-timers to boost the signal integrity. What we do at Lightspeed is we build compact next generation optical interconnects for near packaged and co-packaged optics. This is Light Connect. What you are looking at is a 300 gigabits per second optical I.O. that is surface mountable. So you can literally solder this onto your board with the world's first free space optical communication capability where you can do up to 200 millimeters of high speed data communication without any cables. By doing this, one can create a lot of opportunities within the systems of data centers where you have chip to chip, card to card communication, high speed lanes, but physically, electrically, and thermally isolated systems. So with free space, we are enabling some of these niche applications, but also there are interesting applications where we are providing modularity of this optical I.O. with just providing the optical plug of multi-mode fiber cables with our surface mountable component. So we call that light connect fiber and light connect. And, and you package this into a, um, a system in package, haven't you? So, so the, uh, and you're trialing this at the moment. Absolutely. So. The long term goal is of course uh, always co-packaged optics, that's where it is most efficient, where you're getting all high speed data straight out of the package, all optical. But the industry is not ready to fully adopt this as a sol uh, solution yet, primarily because of reliability concerns, the long term understanding of how these systems would evolve. And the most important concern is the cost associated with the development itself. So now there is a lot of opportunity between the pluggables, which is the traditional, the modular and scalable solution this is going to continue at least for the next 10-15 years but there is an option in between 
before going to co-packaged optics as a near packaged optical solution we can provide optical io as just another surface mount component and put it as part of your system without any additional overhead of your assembly and uh, planning of your system architecture and still get the benefit of legacy compatibility with fiber or with protocols which is even if you are doing free space optical connectivity you can still piggyback on the existing protocol architectures whether it is ethernet or infini band pcie cxl or we are talking about the fiber based traditional uh, interconnects where you have physical compatibility also and and just taking it at a higher level um, so the, the significant benefit of this is is higher speed communications uh, but uh, uh, yeah, without the sort of the, the, the physical sort of the limitations true so the compact form factor comes with its own advantages the moment you shrink this down to a small form factor certainly one of the advantages is you'll be able to stuff in more bandwidth so you can add more bandwidth capability to your systems to you can add more compute by freeing up a lot of space and on top of all that what one can do is take these uh, su surface mount components optical ios and build scalable compute systems so this is something that a lot of ai systems do require where you have multi processor systems where they are communicating uh, with high data and we are hearing a lot about this term called linear pluggable optics or the linear drive optics where the requirement of an external dsp to recover the signal for better bit errors uh, bit error rates we can get to a point where this is so close to the compute uh, chip the package that we can eliminate the need for an external dsp and use the built in dsp of the asic or an fpga or a gpu and still be able to drive the optical signal with minimum bit error rates Okay, and what's your? I mean, uh, for light speed, what's your timeline now? What, uh, in terms of product development, in, in terms of bringing things to market? Well, as a low power alternative to the existing solutions and a compact form factor, this definitely has a lot of appeal. Now, we are currently working on a few pilot projects where we see an application use case going to a scalable architecture. It necessarily what we are looking at is not something that is tailor made custom made for these applications but something that is scalable for multiple applications and our focus for the next 2 years is to convert these pilots into a mass scalable uh, production capable solution uh, we have really good support from the supply chain vendors and one of some of the biggest companies who are uh, promoting these technologies uh, to back us with the supply chain side of uh, development but right now we are working also on the assembly and manufacturing for higher volumes Well, Rohan, thank you very much. Really appreciate doing this, uh, Nitin. Uh, always pleasure talking to you. Thank you.